Hello and welcome. This is System-Wide Collaborations for Building OER, California's OER initiative brought to you by the Academic Senate for California Community Colleges Open Educational Resources Initiative. We have five presenters today. Um, first is Michelle Pilati. She's the faculty coordinator. She is also a psychology instructor at Rio Hondo College in Los Angeles and also at Foothill College in the Bay Area. Suzanne Joaquim uh, is a regional lead for the OERI, also a project monitor and the discipline lead. She is biology faculty from Butte College in Northern California. Shagun Kaur is a project monitor and discipline lead for the OERI. She teaches communi com communication studies at De Anza College in the Bay Area. Jennifer Paris is also a regional lead and discipline lead for the OERI. She teaches early childhood education at the College of the Canyons in Los Angeles. And I am Dave Dillon, um, a regional lead and the webinar lead for the OERI. I'm counseling faculty and a professor at Grossmont College in San Diego um, in Southern California. I'd like to take a moment to make a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that this virtual session is taking place throughout the unceded territory of California, home to nearly 200 tribal nations. As we begin, we acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of our various regions. We remember their connection to this region and give thanks for the opportunity to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homeland. We also, um, I think, acknowledge that this is a virtual session. And um, while we all like physical in-person gatherings, um, that was not possible for this conference. Um, however, my consolation is a virtual Zoom background of Taipei Medical University, where we likely would have gathered had this been an in-person opportunity. So with that, our session goals for today, uh, we will share with you um, training, support, and advocacy for our OER champions across um, a large public education system. Um, we will share with you how we have found success and challenges in connecting institutions together. We will share with you how we build collaborations and really emphasize collaborations within disciplines and across colleges and, and districts. Um, we will let you know how we determined where OER gaps uh, have, have been identified and then how we have gone about trying to fill those gaps. And lastly, we will share with you um, advocacy for, for OER from many different perspectives. Uh, a bit of, of alphabet um, scrabble, uh, acronyms that we use frequently, but folks uh, outside of the United States um, or even just outside of California may not be as familiar with. Um, CCC is California Community Colleges. CSU is California State University. UC, University of California. Um, and the previously mentioned ASCCC or ASCCC, the Academic Senate for California Community Colleges. And our, um, our program that, that the five of us participate in, the OERI, that's the OER Open, not online, Open Educational Resource Initiative. Um, many of you may be familiar with, with the geographical layout of California and our public universities. Um, if you're not, this is a map that shows both the public University of California uh, system in blue and the California State University system in red. And then this slide shares with you the whopping 115 California community colleges that exist to make up the largest um, public education system in the world. With 2.1 million students, 
Um, there are 115 California community colleges in the state, 23 California state universities, and 10 University of California um, system schools, um, nine of which are undergraduate, five medical centers, and three national laboratories. Um, Suzanne, I think this is you. Okay. So um, yeah, our first question to, to answer when we started this project was, as you saw on the last slide, that is a whole lot of colleges over a really big swath of land. Um, and so how do you connect all of these uh, all of these institutions that really have very little connection overall. Um, we don't generally have a lot of um, groups working together, except we do have the Academic Senate, which was a real boon for our project because each college has, um, has a, a Senate member and they meet twice a year. So that was a, um, a good point of connection between all of our campuses. And so for that purpose, when we took on uh, the OER initiative and wanted to build connections, it made sense for it to come from the Academic Senate. So what we did is we identified a point person at each college, the OER liaison. We identified uh, regional leads. So California is divided into five regions according to, to the Senate. And we have a lead for each region. Um, and then we had one coordinator over um, the whole shebang and um, and that was kind of our our setup next slide please so the, the first thing to figure out once we had all of our liaisons in place is how do we support them because some campuses have had uh, oer projects happening in the past other campuses had have just started others i would venture to bet had barely even heard those three letters in that particular order. And so we had the full range of, um, of experience in our liaisons. So the way that we chose to support them and help them build their OER projects on their campuses is we started with orientations for, for new folks just to give them some introductory work. And in each of the regions, the regional leads put together times for the liaisons just to get together and brainstorm ideas. And, and this we, we know from going to conferences, right? That's such an important piece of building connections is just having that unstructured time to just think out loud and, um, and ask for help and ideas. The, the regional leads also had a main role in answering questions. And um, you know, so we, we did a lot of that emails and, and so on and meetings. And we also went to campuses. So this is uh, surprisingly effective uh, because people tend to listen from outside entities more often um, than from people inside their college for whatever reason. And so even though there were fabulous OER liaisons on campuses, sometimes it helped to have somebody from the outside come in and talk about things. We did offer a modest stipend and that was really helpful. Uh, towards the end of this, we'll talk a little bit about how you can build this uh, sort of thing on your in your institutions, and if there is funding, a stipend is really nice. Although I think a lot of our liaisons would have done this anyway because they're just fabulous people and it wasn't a gigantic stipend. So that couldn't have been the only um, motivation. And then we've provided training, lots and lots of training. So the next slide will, will show a little bit about those trainings. And this is a, a short list. <laughs> so this is just a kind of a sample. I'll show you where you can find all of our trainings in, in a little bit. On the right side, we had trainings that were specific to liaisons. So things like adv advocacy, how do you find funding? How do you work with a bookstore? How do you approach your administration? How do you give presentations to your campus so that, that OER becomes something they're interested in? Finding allies, fostering engagement, on and on. We also provide weekly webinars. So these are both for liaisons and also something that they can use to do outreach to their campuses. You know, they can send reminders of here's this upcoming webinar. So it's a good way to, for them to engage with their campus in a really um, easy way for them. So the weekly webinars, again, covered the whole range of things from licensing, copyright accessibility, some basics on you know, why it matters, how do you find OER, how do you curate, and then um, at the very end is showcases, which I think was particularly effective where we had people share specific disciplines, what's in that discipline, what have they been using? Uh, because as we know, faculty tend to 
understand their own disciplines better, right? So the best way to convince a, um, a math faculty to go to OER is to have other math faculty talk to them. So those are our trainings. And next slide, please. And we also had two-way communication, which is really helpful. So we had, um, we asked liaisons a lot of uh, questions about what do they need? We got a lot of input from them. We also shared out a lot of in, um, information in, in newsletters and so on, and specifically newsletters that they can share with their campus. Because again, part of what we were trying to do is help liaisons build OER movements on their campus. And as we know, you know, trying to build a movement is, is challenging. And so anything we could do to um, help them with that was, was useful, uh, such as newsletters that they could send out to their faculty, right? So that was a pretty um, low entry point into, into their um, work on campus. Our webinars was something they could share with their faculty. And then from there, that's building hopefully a, a groundswell of interest and they can take that to the next step and start developing collaborations on campus. So lots and lots of regular updates. One place that we had um, a particularly robust set of, of resources, if I could have one of my fabulous co-presenters um, put that link, no, we're still, we're on, yeah, there we go. Put that link in the chat, please. So this is the website for our initiative. And there's, uh, this is just a, um, a small sampling of what's there. So we'll back one slide, sorry, there we go. Um, so this is the developer's webpage. And what we have here is some useful information that liaisons can share with their campus about if faculty are interested in developing, what, what do they need to know? You know, accessibility, licensing, there's um, all sorts of information there. The, the, one of the tabs across the top says webinars and events. That's where you can go to see all of our previous webinars. They're recorded. There's uh, slide decks. And of course, they're all openly licensed. So if you want to use those slides for presentation and your own institutions, you are, are very welcome to do that. Um, and, and so there's all sorts of other useful uh, information on the website. I'm not going to go through it. You're, you're welcome to peruse and, um, and check that out. We also built a Canvas shell that was focused more on um, a way to share information, but also a way to have liaisons and people within the same discipline have an opportunity to discuss with each other, right? So Camp uh, Canvas as an LMS has some nice discussion features. And so we're hoping this is a more informal place for people to chat about resources. We also have, and I'm not going to talk about discipline leads because that's going to be covered in a little bit, but we have um, pages for each discipline where uh, we're listing all of the resources for that discipline. So again, something liaisons can share out with their um, constituents. Next slide, please. Excellent. And I believe this is the next section. Thank you, Suzanne. So as Suzanne said, we had set up the parameters for setting um, for two-way communication with the liaisons on each campus. And we had already talked about how we wanted to have them be supported and have resources for them. But one of the marching orders that we got as part of this initiative was not only to um, help promote OER adoption, but also see where the gaps existed and what we could do collectively as 115 college strong community to fulfill, identify those needs and of course get around fulfilling them. Next slide, please. So one of the first things we did was, was of course, as any good researcher does is see what's out there. You used to build by first examining the lay of the land. And in doing so, um, we ran a series of discipline specific surveys, which were sent out again, as Suzanne mentioned through the wonderful network that already existed with the academic state Senate. And for cohort one, we invariably, as soon as we started, we had this done and we pretty much based it on members that were part of the um, leadership team. And of course, some preliminary requests we had started to get from our liaisons across the state. We were just getting off the ground. You will notice that cohort two had quite a bigger range of disciplines. And this, again, speaking to the two-way communication that Suzanne referred to, this was very much informed by the uh, proposals and drafts and requests we were getting. And anybody that couldn't be part of the initial proposal or project, which I'll talk about in a minute, 
um, we wanted to first see what needs there were, why were people putting in these proposals, and then see if we could get some of those discipline faculties together. So much of the cohort choices and much of the communication and much of our work was very much informed by the two-way communication processes we had set up with our liaisons. And it was really coming from them, and that was the work that was guiding us. Dave, next, oh, I'm sorry, whoever it is, next slide, please. <laughs> Jennifer? Yep. So um, I wanted to provide a little bit of an example of what we, some of the information that we learned from our surveys. So um, the discipline leads uh, that have been identified, and that's a process that we're actually um, in the middle of expanding, um, uh, looked at the surveys and tried to make sense of what we were being told by the faculty across our system. And so, uh, for example, uh, child development, so my area, um, we also call it early childhood education, depending on uh, where you're at. Um, so over 60 faculty responded, mostly from our California community colleges, but we did have one from the CSU system. Um, most of them had heard about OER. Um, most of them thought they were using OER, um, but probably were actually using free resources, um, and that was a discipline um, specific situation because there wasn't a lot of existing OER, um, and so there was a little bit of um, much longer story about uh, the difference between free and open uh, in the in the uh, California community college system, but um, those that weren't using OER, um, you know, identified the reasons why not having enough time to look or not knowing where to look or not finding resources that um, at all or ones that met their needs. So helped us see the challenges that we needed to help um, this particular discipline overcome. Um, and for the most part, we didn't have to convince them of the quality of OER. There were only two people that didn't believe that it would be a high enough quality. Um, and then we looked at some of the other materials that faculty were wanting to use that would support whatever their course content was. Um, and again, this helps give us an idea of what we might need to fund and what we might need to look for and what we might need to help support the building of in order for OER to be successful in a particular discipline. And so this was just one example of our first surveys um, and it definitely helped guide the, the work that um, later happened um, that we supported in this particular discipline. Uh, next slide, back to you, Shagun. Thank you, Jennifer. So coming back to what has guided our philosophy in this initiative from day one, uh, that we are not closing off any channels of input or any channels of communication whatsoever. So yes, we were definitely doing these surveys, but at the same time, we were also getting off the ground um, liaison webinars that Suzanne mentioned and those training sessions, which of course gave us plenty of feedback. So that too informed um, the disciplines we wanted to focus on or where the greatest need was, or as Jennifer rightly said, what was getting in the way of having an OER adoption, if there was a need for ancillaries, if there was a specific need for um, you know, PowerPoint slides, et cetera. We wanted to make sure that uh, we got that in there. Thank you, Michelle. I know we love our acronyms. Um, as discipline leads, some of us, as you know, are discipline leads. Uh, we were also identifying and putting together resources in our own field following the TMC, um, which is the transfer model curriculum that Michelle just put in the chat and using that as a framework to see where the gaps in a particular discipline existed so that we could see if they would be interested in coming together and collaborating upon that field. Jennifer is going to talk in a minute about discipline specific gatherings, which did have, which serve two purposes of bringing faculty, like-minded faculty together and also getting a sense of where the greatest need was and what we needed to do to push the envelope forward. Uh, Michelle, our fearless leader is going to talk to you uh, later about collaborating with other state entities and kind of keeping that two-way communication cycle open with advisory councils and other advice and help from other entities so that we were not recreating the wheel. There's anybody who's been in the OER community for a while knows that there's a lot of uh, collaboration happening and there's a lot of interesting work happening all the time. And people are, the nature of OER means that we are by nature collaborative people who love to share resources. And so a big part of, of the initiative for us because of how big we are and how many colleges we support was trying to make sure that we, our energies were spent in the right direction, that we were working to build upon what had already been created by others and not duplicating efforts needlessly. Next slide, please. Back to you, Jennifer. 
So yeah, so some examples of what we just talked about. Um, and so I know that they're kind of small um, uh, documents there, but I just wanted to kind of you to see what that looked like. So Suzanne mentioned um, that in Canvas, each discipline that had a discipline lead built out resources that were used in the California Community College system or had been developed for use in the California Community College system for um, commonly um, common courses across the different colleges. And we're very lucky that most disciplines had the TMC, have the TMC that Michelle put the acronym for, um, which corresponds with a, a common numbering system. Um, so we all call our courses different things. We have different prefixes. We have different course numbers. Uh, but this gives us a way of being able to identify, oh, you know, this particular class relates to this class at this institution and this one and this one. And so it gives us a little bit of a common ground in most disciplines, not all. Um, uh, but those are kind of where we started. Um, and so if you go into my discipline in our Canvas shell, you'll find the eight courses uh, that uh, make up our transfer degree um, and resources, if available, for those eight courses. Um, and then we wanted to put it into that same handout that the system provides for that, that, uh, that degree, the, the TMC as we commonly refer to it. Um, and so on the left, you'll see that document where we actually have live links um, so that it's like a two page document that um, ideally so that the links are functional, you would email it to someone or you would give it to them digitally, um, but it, it makes it really easy to coordinate what uh, resources are available for which course. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible for faculty to find resources that are as close to ready to use as possible, because we know that's one of the big challenges with OER is I have to be able to find it and it has to be ready for me to use um, or as close to ready as possible. Um, and so that, that's kind of an example in one dis uh, uh, discipline. Um, we also wanted to kind of um, show you that so some of the things that we've talked about, there's money behind. And we know that there is not money um, it, for OER in many places and in these economic times. So um, what was kind of happening uh, simultaneously um, with a lot of the work that we were doing, um, and some of it even predated um, the OERI's formal existence, uh, was this kind of grassroots collaboration efforts. Um, and so it started out um, with me personally realizing with some of the work that I was doing, um, we need a common place for resources to be shared, right? We don't need to be going to 16 different websites trying to find resources. And so I just created a Google group where people could post uh, or go looking for resources and I tried to organize it by course. Um, so very similar to what we've tried to do a little bit more formally with the OERI. Um, there were some simultaneous grants that were running and what we discovered through those grants is that um, some of the uh, colleges that were awarded them were doing really similar work. We had in the one round of funding, there were five colleges that got money to work in child development and early childhood education. And so that realized that we kind of had a community, we just didn't know it existed. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we did was we decided to bring people together um, and uh, we did free summits. And this was before we did gatherings like this through Zoom. Um, and so we were pretty, I felt like we were like trailblazers, uh, but we allowed people that could come in person. So they were in driving distance, um, they could come for free, um, but you could also join us virtually and part partake in the the entire uh, day-long workshop, uh, including the working groups uh, that were uh, formed. Um, and so that was really successful. We had three. Um, th that image there on the left is from the first. Um, and uh, I think uh, overall, I'm trying to remember, I should have looked up our numbers. Uh, but I think we had over 30 people in the room. And I think we had you know close to 50 joining us virtually. So that was really exciting to see that the interest was there. We just needed some support and coordination. Um, from that came the email list. So it started with the Evite um, email addresses and that list has grown to almost 300 people um, that I now have this running Google doc that I use with my colleague who's not here today that's also part of the OERI, Amanda Tainter, um, to reach out and share newly released OER or um, the next thing on the list, uh, these regularly scheduled Zoom conversations. So we didn't wanna lose the momentum that we got when we started getting, collaborating. And so one of the things that Amanda did was started bi-weekly Zoom conversations. They're now monthly, just uh, time management. Um, but once a month we get together, we share what's going on, we answer questions and we reconnect our community. Um, 
my college was one of the recipients of the grants and with our grant funding we created uh, textbooks that didn't really exist for our discipline but uh, I think the important thing that I want to share here with the mostly free point is that I housed them in Google groups. Um, still not sure that's the best choice but it's the one that I stumbled on um, so that people could share they could join the group and if they created PowerPoints or whatever ancillary materials um, they they particularly used and were willing to share, they could easily share those without having to submit them in, in some sort of formal process. Um, it is still a work in progress. Um, and then of course we did a lot of uh, sharing. Um, so anytime we had a chance to do something like this, we would, uh, Amanda and I would try and, and reach as many people as we could to grow, continue to grow that collaboration. Um, and so while some of the things there was a cost involved, a lot of these could be done um, at no cost. And so we did wanna kind of share an example of how this could be done without a large funding source. Um, all right, Shagun, back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. So the, what all of this resulted in was, of course, um, once we knew where the gaps existed and we knew faculty were willing to come together and collaborate and share resources and even work on these resources, the natural progression of that led, led to RFP. And again, that's another acronym if somebody can put in the full form, Request for Proposals. And we did, we did the first round um, of RFPs almost very soon after we got set up as an initiative. I'm forgetting the dates now. Um, we invited people to come together and submit requests for proposals and they were short term up to 20,000. I know the first time we did it, it was six months and it was definitely a, a challenge for everybody involved, both working on it and the project monitors who were helping facilitate it. What we did was we made sure that our um, collaborators and our authors and people working on OER projects had to demonstrate a statewide need. It was important for us that they on, but we're not creating ancillaries or resources or any OER material that just served one or two campuses. So they definitely had to demonstrate a statewide need. Um, they def and we actually helped with this. We had uh, we actually had assigned a part of the leadership team to a group of applicants and we helped them uh, look for resources out there and see if there were gaps that, that were already filled by another resource. And if the resource was not up to standard or did not meet the needs of the California Community College system, then we were willing to work with them to see what, how the RFP could be modified or changed based on what was, uh, so that it would address a direct need that was, that met statewide uh, requirements. Um, some of us also provided training to help people assist in demonstrating that need and teaching them how to tap into state data to determine how commonly a course was taught across the 115 California Community Colleges. So for example, um, one of the courses I teach, which is public speaking, is something that is taught across all 115 California community colleges. It's one of the general ed requirements, it's kind of an important course. But there are others within my discipline that are taught at a select few campuses, maybe 15 or 20. And that is not to say that those campuses and their needs are not important, but you know, given, given funding, given time, given all that we are juggling, you know, the priorities have to be given to courses that definitely impact, have the maximum impact to the maximum extent of our student population or where there is such a big gap that stops the needle from moving forward. So in RFP2, we did something uh, different. We, again, trainings and help and guidance, but we also, before that, had by that time developed enough of a relationship through our weekly webinars and these faculty gatherings that Jennifer talked about where we could bring disciplined faculty together and help set up collaboration. So we ended up having three or more camp campuses come together and collaborate full-time or adjunct faculty and wanted to see how collaboration and working together on a project brought in different perspectives and multiple resources to the table. And these were a little longer. They were spread over roughly about 11 months and they were up to 30 grand. Again, um, the funding was primarily to the faculty to, the, to do the work. And as Jennifer said, and Suzanne earlier said, money is never going to equal the work that all of us put into this, but it's a nice way of getting some of the, um, clearing some of the pathways for people. There was also extensive amount of training given uh, to our RFP authors, be it through webinars on accessibility, um, be it uh, on platforms that they could use, whether it be Pressbooks or LibreText. Um, and each of them have 
one of the project monitors aside, who is essentially their resource person, their FAQ manual, um, their Good Girls Friday if they just need to vent about the rest of the team members. So essentially, they, each of these uh, authors, uh, lead people on the team, have one of us directly in contact with them. And since we are in touch with each other all the time, it helps it helps the resource sharing and the two-way communication that has been, I think, the base block of our initiative. Some of the projects that we are really <laughs> and just some of the projects that we're really excited about uh, cover a whole range from PowerPoints to um, video uh, to I think cooking videos was the one that got most of us excited to of course o traditional OER textbooks to ancillaries um, and the website that was put in the chat you can see a sampling of some of the work that has been created under RFP one we are still working on RFP two over to you Jennifer. So yeah, so some of the takeaways, and Shagoon already touched on some of these, um, that we discovered through the efforts that we've taken so far, and we're about halfway through our initiative, uh, at least the current um, or the initial uh, funding cycle. Um, the importance of uh, project, project monitors and mentors, right? Faculty don't know what they don't know. Um, and the only way that we know what they don't know is to be involved in the work that they're doing and to identify those things as quickly as possible so that it doesn't create more work for everybody. Um, and so part of that is that fourth bullet point, really having a formalized training system where we make sure that everybody understands licensing and attributions and accessibility and curation and all of those things that are really important to building a resource that is going to be able to be implemented and, um, and adopted across the system. Um, we also know that collaboration across colleges is vital, especially as Shagun said, we have limited funding. We have to prioritize what's going to impact um, the, uh, the most people. Um, we want to make sure that we're ensuring local, uh, meeting local needs, uh, local copyright attribution and accessibility needs. Most campuses don't have adequate resources for those. So we want to make sure that uh, we're, we're supporting that as much as we can. Um, one of the things that we've recognized through finding, so a couple of things. So if you're looking at TMC and oh, resources, 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 and then there's a course or two that just have nothing. That is a targeted uh, identifiable gap that we can create a targeted um, project for, right? So we know we need a book or course content for course XYZ, right? Um, so now we could put out a call and, and we're in the process of working on this now for the first time, put out a call for that specific project. Uh, we also can uh, recognize targeted resource opportunities when we have people that apply to uh, you know, put in uh, proposals for very similar projects. So if four groups of faculty across the state all want to create a resource around the same um, content, um, that's a great targeted resource. Um, so instead of funding only one of those groups, why not bring those groups together to create something and, 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 and really formalize that collaboration? And so we're recognizing that all of the efforts that we're doing are a way to really formalize or in some cases, and in most cases, start this statewide discipline collaboration. Um, you know, some, uh, some uh, discipline faculty don't even know their colleagues across the state. Some have organizations, you know, I know our organization has several different, our, our discipline has several statewide organizations. So we tend to recognize some of the common people in our field, uh, but not all disciplines have that. And so this was one way for us to really create a way to foster that collaboration that we know is so important. And that's it for Shagun and I section. Oh, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm up and I, I was keeping track and, and you guys left plenty for me to say, but I found myself um, wanting to go in a couple of different directions. One of the things that we haven't talked about at all is how COVID has impacted our work. And um, when everything started happening and all of our faculty across 115 colleges were moving to doing things completely online, um, the statewide academic Senate really mobilized its resources to help faculty and we were part of that. And so we, we did a lot around helping faculty see ways to um, find OER and move OER quickly into a course shell if they were suddenly uh, doing a something online that they have never done before. So we were part of um, part of that effort. And in looking back, some of the things that we had started to do uh, in the course of our work, I think were actually really, really beneficial. Uh, as a project that really was potentially touching all of our faculty, 
we started to make it part of everything that we did was talking about accessibility. And so we have faculty who may have been dabbling in OER and coming to the kind of trainings that we were offering, who when suddenly they're tossed completely online without any planning, at least had an idea about accessibility that they might not have had. And so there were things that we were doing for the good of our system, for the good of our students that were actually um, really beneficial overall. Um, so I'm supposed to talk about advocacy and which I think is a great topic because advocacy is one of those things that you don't have to have money to do it. You, if you have money, you, you can do a lot more, um, but you can be an advocate with um, very little cost. And so we're really focusing on providing statewide advocacy and then supporting those local advocates as well as supporting local OER efforts and supporting in, in every way from, and I think you've got hints of this, supporting local liaisons in solving problems as well as in finding resources. And so a big part of what we do is bring those liaisons together so that they can talk through their issues and find solutions. And so um, that's been really important. And you already heard that we do lots of presentations. Um, we do presentations, um, so often that we start to lose track of them and have to remind ourselves, but we also now are holding statewide conversations about particular topics so that those, those local advocates can come together to talk about what they're doing and to, um, to work on problem solving together. So we're really trying to provide that sense of community at almost every level that you can think of from what you're trying to do from what discipline you're at as well as helping someone who's trying to build something locally to build it among their co their colleagues next slide please so um, as was mentioned we came out of this um, and we are faculty working with faculty and we're entirely a faculty organization working out of the, uh, the academic senate for california community colleges which literally is the statewide voice of our faculty. So because of that, we are, um, our organization is known to our faculty and we have lots of ways to, to hook into those local campuses that really has been beneficial for helping us to get information out um, as well as to bring information in. We were really lucky um, to get the funding that we have. And I, I wanna talk just a little bit about the funding and how we got the funding, but then also talk about things that don't require funding. Um, uh, the Academic Senate had been wanting to do something bigger than what it had been doing in the OER space, um, having already had to respond to OER related legislation, um, as well as really wanting to have a mechanism for sharing OER with faculty and helping to move it forward. And so um, the um, organization formed a task force to work on this and to develop a proposal. Um, and so we got very lucky uh, in that we developed a proposal and it did in fact get funding. This was, um, it, it was at an opportune, it was at an opportune time and we were also very lucky um, and it's, it's more than luck, but we were also very fortunate in that we had powerful allies to help us get that funding. The organization that supports, um, that represents our college presidents and our college trustees supported our work. So we literally had leaders from our campuses in Sacramento advocating for giving us money to do the work that we're doing. So we were very, very fortunate with respect to that. But one of the things that you can see here is that we started doing a lot of work before we had money. So for um, almost two years, we were doing a lot of the things that we were doing now, but without any support to make it happen, working with a committee of volunteers um, and so forth. Go ahead to the next slide, please. So, um, as noted, we're really lucky, even though we're big, um, we have an infrastructure that facilitates communication. Um, and as you, you've already heard, we have some common language around talking about what we're doing at our colleges. So we have the Academic Senate. We've always had pretty, a pretty rust, robust community system with robust system of communities within our system, people who uh, communicate with one another based on their roles. So based on um, the work that they're doing, they have networks for talking to each other so that we are um, 
solving problems not alone, but by talking to a community. Um, if you know anything about California, we have lots of laws and lots of regulations to deal with, and, and we try to deal with it together, which makes it, um, if nothing else, you're enjoying the pain with others. Um, and we also have an infrastructure in place to support discipline-based communication. Um, Shugan mentioned and Jennifer mentioned the TMCs, and underneath the TMCs are descriptors for courses that are commonly taught. Um, descriptors that were developed not just by the community colleges, but were also developed in a very strong partnership with our CSU colleagues so that we have a common understanding of what, what does public speaking look like? What does child development look like? What does introduction to poli sci look like? Um, and because of that, we have listservs of people who were involved in those processes. Um, and so we have for all of our basic disciplines, robust listservs that allow us to push messages out to specific faculty in specific disciplines, which is um, super useful when we are doing the different surveys. We can push them to OER advocates, but we can also push them directly to faculty so that hopefully we're not missing anyone who's, interest who's interested. We had existing statewide OER um, and related efforts happening here in California. So when we came on the scene, the idea of OER and zero textbook cost was not something new. Uh, and so a big part of what we were advocating for is that we wanna bring those efforts together and we want to build on them. So one of the things that we already had, um, we, we had things happening, but there was no mechanism for collaboration. So one of the big pieces that we, problems that we really wanted to solve was that with 115 colleges, when there is a granting opportunity, there's almost no way 115 colleges are gonna benefit from that. And so because we'd had these selected granting opportunities, we had some colleges that were moving far along with respect to developing OER, developing ZTC. And then we had other colleges that were sort of left out. And so we really want to see, wanted to see how can we bring all these efforts together and how can we ensure that across our 115 colleges, we don't have a system of, have, of haves and have nots. So how can we support the faculty at every college so that every college and students at every college can benefit from OER and everything that it has to offer. Next slide, please. So why this effort? Um, why, why do we exist? <laughs> um, we thought it was really important to have a faculty-led effort. Um, having administrators that are in favor and supportive is awesome, but you really need to have the faculty to help bring other faculty along. And um, as somebody already mentioned, the best way to get a faculty member in a particular discipline to consider OER, to adopt OER, is to have them hear from one of their colleagues about what that looks like and why it's good. And so we really want to be able to provide that voice to provide that voice and that, um, that discipline-based advocacy at every step along the way. We also thought it was important to have something like this so that we can really focus on leveraging the size of our system and our state. So to make sure that we are bringing all the great minds that we have together, bringing them together in order to collaborate. As Shagun mentioned, um, our last RFP, we required faculty to collaborate. Um, and this was, um, it's a lot easier to do things by yourself, um, but ultimately the benefit of doing things with others is, is much greater. Um, and so we are really looking forward to um, our next step, which is bringing faculty together to do the things that we think that they need to develop. We've identified things that they should do, and then we're gonna recruit the faculty and then provide the guidance for them centrally. Right now we have teams led by a faculty member um, who wrote the proposal and, and they're working and we're supporting them, but they're somewhat on their own. And so we're looking at trying this targeted approach to development and in some instances, bringing groups together where we're not sure exactly what they need and we're going to bring them together to figure out what they need and then support them in doing it. And so we're really, really exciting, excited about that. A big piece of what we're trying to do is prevent duplication of effort. If you have a granting system that is looking at a bunch of different proposals in isolation and you're focusing on supporting a college as opposed to supporting a resource to benefit all colleges, you 
can wind up at the same time supporting duplicate projects at different places. And so we really wanted to get away from doing that. We're very, very focused also on building upon what came before. There are lots of things that have happened in our state that have led to the creation of resources that in some, some instances are not being used. And so we want to find ways to use those resources as well as building upon all the work that has been done at our colleges um, under the prior grants that are out there. So um, a big part of our work we have, um, as was mentioned, we have two guiding bodies. One is an advisory committee that, that needs to okay our work plan and give us input, um, particularly from the perspective of a local college. Uh, but um, the, probably the more exciting group that we have formed is a coordinating council where we bring together um, everyone in the state that is doing OER work or OER related work to talk about what we're doing and to identify points of intersection. So this includes our statewide online education initiative, which actually has helped us out a lot because one thing that simplifies um, our work is the fact that we're all using the same course management system. So if we're talking about creating resources that are going to live in a course management system, all 115 of our colleges are in the same system. We of course work with our chancellor's office. Um, all of our money actually throws through our chancellor's office. Um, we work with our librarians. We also have um, two national, international um, OER, OER related projects that exist within our transfer uh, public transfer partners. The CSU with Cool for Ed, which is something that came about as a consequence of prior legislation that was actually asking all three segments of public education to public higher education to work together on OER, as well as um, Merlot. And then LibreText is here in California. We also um, have uh, CCC OER as they happen to be here in California, so they join us as well. And then um, we have had a robust zero, text, zero textbook cost um, grant pr process and community in our system, along with technical assistance providers who are also part of our coordinating council. So we're really coming together to talk about what we're doing to um, identify points of um, intersection and so that we can work together. Just to share with you briefly, we um, have had various legislation previously that are some of the things that we're building on. Um, and we kind of came along as a lot of these granting um, opportunities were coming to an end. And so there was sort of work that was started that um, in some instances we were able to, to fund projects that went along with it and took it to the next level. So in 2015, we had the College Textbook Affordability Act that um, was one mechanism that started to grow um, OER in, in both the community colleges and in the CSU. Uh, we're very fortunate in that our CSU system um, is very well um, supported with respect to OER. So the, our colleagues there are a great resource for us. Next slide. Um, and then we have the zero textbook degree program that um, was already referenced that um, really helped a, a number of colleges really build an infrastructure for moving resources, um, moving, moving their work forward and developing an infrastructure for developing zero textbook cost degrees. Um, and so again, these are things that were sort of going away um, and we were able to pick up um, on that. I know I'm talking very fast. Am I missing anything in the chat or are we just quiet there? Nothing, okay, all right, good. All right, next slide. So um, how do you attain funding? So first of all, I think it's really important that if you've got committed people, you don't need, you, you've got committed people, um, that did not sound good. Um, if you have people who are committed to OER, yeah, there's a lot that you can do by uh, harnessing their energy and their passion. Um, and most of us, or a good, a good chunk of us, um, were involved in the non-funded efforts back, um, back in the day. Um, and there's a lot that you can do before you actually get that funding. In, in, and um, that's really advantageous. Um, I also should point out that first RFP, we just put a call out very quickly and said, what do you wanna do that you think's gonna you know, increase OER use in our system? Um, and we were able to fund a lot of faculty who 
had not been getting any dollars for their efforts or had started something and not finished and we were able to fund them to get to done. So that was really exciting. But how do you attain funding? I think it's really important that you um, start doing something and start establishing an infrastructure an infrastructure before you have the money. You've got to do some pre-work so that when you when you do get the money, you can be positive about it. Um, you know what you're going to do with it and you're ready, you're ready to run, you're ready to get moving. I think one of the most challenging things with lots of grant systems is you get the money and then it takes you a bunch of time to figure out how do you, how you spend it and how you build that infrastructure to spend it. And so if it's a short-term grant, all of a sudden you're supposed to have spent the money and you still haven't built the infrastructure to spend the money. So it's really important to do the pre-work, figure out what you wanna do and how you're going to do it before you get, um, get money. And recruiting allies is absolutely critical. The fact that we had another organization that was out there supporting what the Academic Senate was advocating for and literally walking the halls of our state capitol with funding our work in this space as part of their message was huge. Um, it's also important that you have a clear vision of what you want to do and how you're going to do it. And that clear vision, of course, can be part of what helps you to um, bring others along. So we're very clear about the importance of respecting the work that came before and seeing how we can build on that work. Um, we've done that in a number of, of different ways, um, work that happened under the two grants that we already mentioned. Um, we also think it's important that you are proposing to do something that capitalizes on what you have to offer. What we have to offer is faculty across 115 um, colleges who um, are interested in OER and willing to do, do OER work. And our organization is all about bringing faculty together to do good work to benefit their students. Um, you want really in that vision, want to identify both issues and opportunities. And I think the um, lack of collaboration was an issue and the opportunities to step in and to really support what's happening at the local level was a, a great opportunity. Um, it's also really important to think about sustainability, to not just assume that you're going to exist forever um, and work on building structures that can live on. Um, our hope is that after our initial five years of funding that we will be able to secure additional funding beyond that that does not need to be at the same level after we have um, built things out over that first five years. But at the same time, if OER is going to continue and really take hold across our system, there's got to be um, that local will, that local interest. And so supporting those local liaisons is huge. And our secret hope in supporting liaisons the way that we have been is that they will then turn around and be able to create an infrastructure at the local level to keep things going no matter what happens with us at the state level. So um, what can you do that's low cost or no cost pre-work? Um, surveys are great. Um, and as you saw, we've done surveys a couple of times. We have um, also prior to that, prior to the um, funding mechanism that led to Cool for Ed, the Senate had done a survey to get a sense of sort of the, the lay of the OER land. And so we have a nice story that we can tell looking at faculty attitudes and awareness of OER over time. But um, when you're gathering data, you're also letting people know about things. And so um, we have learned so much from, from the survey process, just as we also learned so much from the request for proposals process. Um, the request for proposals process, sorry, that's not low cost or no cost, but it's really important to, to, um, to share that when we put the call out for, you know, what do faculty want to do? What do they need? What do they think we need? You learn so much about which disciplines are already highly invested um, in OER, particularly, you know, with, within your state and aware of it, as well as the ones that aren't aware of, uh, aren't aware of what's out there. So you get a, a sense of the community that currently exists. Um, you can establish listservs for OER advocates or interested disciplines. Um, I think Jennifer's story about what happened with um, ECE child development is great. You can conduct webinars. Um, we've been doing webinars now, I think, um, at least weekly for about 
three years, um, if not longer. Um, and, and so we, the, our webinars predate our work. Um, but and it makes it so we have this incredible library where if you you know if you're looking for a webinar on something here you go check it out. Um, we um, one one thing that you can always do is add OER to the agenda whenever faculty are convened. If there's an event happening, add OER to it. Have somebody there to talk about it. That's that's easy enough. And of course, you can always educate others, faculty, colleagues. Um, and administrators about OER. So that is um, what we had prepared. So I'm happy to open it up to questions and take this out, um, take this in whatever directions anyone wants to take it. Um, and if any of the other panelists would like to jump in with any thoughts, I welcome it. Dave, I was feeling guilty that I don't have California in my background, but since you don't, I guess I'm okay. <laughs> this is a no guilt session. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. If, if you have questions, um, please feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand or type your question in the chat. Oh, we're actually almost at time. I didn't, I didn't think I talked that long. Sneaks up on you. I'd love like just completely random out of left field questions from someone who's here. <laughs> I, I don't think that Lena or Rory are in this session and Marie, I don't know if you would like to speak to this, but I'm curious how Canada might compare in some ways to um, trying to figure out logistics for, for OER across a large system. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you. Hi, this is Marie. I'm uh, joining in from BC and it's fascinating to see what you guys are doing. It's such a large endeavor. <laughs> we have a uh, smaller scale, but similar problems. I um, was especially interested uh, how you were actively uh, trying to prevent doubling efforts because that's what's definitely happening here with our best intentions and we have some coordinated um, uh, OER activities but a lot of them are very grassroots <laughs> and so doubling happens easily. Did you guys uh, encounter a lot of doubling despite you trying to prevent it? I, th I th you know, I think um, so because uh, because we we're doing we're doing requests for proposals and we're putting it out and we're looking at everything. You would think that we have to some extent we can control that, um, but we did the first round accidentally fund two very Shagun smiling um, fund two very similar um, projects, but ultimately we were able to bring those faculty together um, to 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 really take that, you know, to, to leverage those um, seemingly competing efforts. Um, and so now, and, and with the second round, um, we were able to be much more um, strategic. And part of what we did with the second request for proposals, we, in both, both times we did a, a two-step process. Um, the first time, because we, our timeline was so short before we had all the details of our request for proposal worked out, we needed to make sure we had faculty thinking about it. So we put out this informal letter of interest where they, they had to tell us they were interested if they wanted, you know, if they wanted to, um, they, we had to, they had to tell us they were interested and tell us what they were interested in doing. And part of the advantage of that was that they had the ability to influence what the request for proposals looked like by doing that. Um, and so it also for us was a way to find out what people wanted to do to inform the proposal. Um, yeah. And that and that worked. I mean, that worked really nicely. The second time around, we we knew we wanted to make them collaborate, <laughs> um, and and so we uh, we did again a letter. And this time, um, we took all the letters that we got, organized them by discipline, and then worked on co literally connecting faculty across across the state um, so that they could come together. The um, one of the things that we discovered too there is that we had some faculty that were really, really interested, but the nature of their discipline made it very hard for them to come up with a proposal 
that would be fundable. Uh, and so uh, we mentioned that we're about to do some targeted work. We're going to be uh, working on, assuming we get the faculty to step a uh, biological psychology textbook, um, Shagun will correct me if I get this wrong, interpersonal communication. Um, but we're also going to be bringing um, English as a second language faculty together um, to see what they could um, develop that would benefit ESL faculty across the state, recognizing the, that the populations they work with are incredibly different. So we're really excited to see how that works. And we're also trying to bring nursing faculty together to um, direct them to the existing resources that are out there to see if there are OER resources that work for our faculty and if they don't, to engage them in making those resources work. And so um, we're trying to create those opportunities that leverage and bring faculty with, with common interests together. Um, and try to get away from those one-offs happening across the state. Yeah, no, that's great. We have similar incentives. We have a, a big kind of provincial, so um, in BC, provincial initiative through BC campus, and it's also uh, by subject area. And um, we organize sprints, so we bring people together to create OERs. Um, but just recently, you know, talking about textbook, we uh, I worked on a, a Canadian edition of a psychology textbook that we kind of mixed and matched from multiple um, OER, and then somebody in another province duplicated the effort. So just when you think that you have at least you know one area <laughs> covered, but yeah, you know, having said that, it's okay to have two first year psych textbooks. <laughs> They're going to be different angles in them and people will have more choices. So in the long run, you know, that's okay, but you're kind of seeing the small amount of dollars trickling into. <laughs> yeah. 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 Marie, I'd love to continue that discussion. And I think the platform is built to um, encourage us to use Connect to, to continue to communicate and discuss and collaborate. And I also know that Walter and Una are here so I'm going to give the floor to them um, to get ready for the next session. Thank you again for joining us. We appreciate um, your support and participation.